Now, what a joy to be seeing and witnessing Violet's youth on Queen Charlotte. Now, what was like? What was the whole experience like for you? Um, really lovely. It was the. It was a bit for me. It was a bit like going home because uh, getting there, we had some of the the same crew. We had the same DOP, Jeff. We had the same director, Tom. And of course, I'm on the, the timeline that is Regency, so it's all the same actors. There was Adjua playing Lady Danbury, there was Golda, Queen Charlotte, there was Hugh playing Brimsley. And we had some of the same uh, supporting artists, which meant it just felt like an extension of where I've, I've been. I think, because um, also, because the other, the other timeline, of course, I have nothing to do Quite often in Bridgerton, you have these big events. There's a big ball or there's a big gathering and there's lots and lots of characters involved. And what was wonderful about this um, this series of Queen Charlotte is that Shonda wrote very intimate scenes. So the, the scenes were conversational pieces. So I could have intimate conversations and show a vulnerability with Lady Danbury that I often don't get the, the opportunity to because we're in the middle of a ball scene. So it's, it was a really lovely experience and it's a beautiful piece. Now, do you feel like yours and Violet's you share any similarities as far as uh, personal characteristics are involved? Um, other than that I love those children, probably not. I think I'd like to think I did, but I don't think I'm that <laughs> lovely. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, it's also refreshing to be getting to know Violet before she was the, di the Dowager Viscountess Bridgerton. At the time of Queen Charlotte, she's just Violet. Now, do you believe that while growing up, we inevitably lose some part of ourselves that made us us? I think there always is when, uh, as you get older, I think I have no children, but I think when you're, you're seeing your children leave the nest, I think you question your role and I, I know she has a lot of children left but <laughs> she has married a couple of them off and she sees them embrace life and love and she realizes that she's lost a lot of that so i we see her at a time where she realizes she wants to embrace life and also one of the other beautiful things about violet on this show is that um we see her before she is not just but mainly the mother of, of Bridgerton. Now, this kind of flips the scripts and changes the viewer's perspective on this whole saga. Now, um, do you believe that uh, women are still tied too much on the kind of role of the mother on television and movies? Well, it's an interesting debate, that, and I'm, I'm not sure. In terms of this role, I can only say that you kind of, in terms of Bridgerton, you kind of go along with what your what, where the origin of where those stories come from, which are those books, which is what the premise is. So it's not like I can kind of say, well, I don't think she should be like this because, because that is what it, that is what it is. But it is quite, but it is quite an interesting debate. It is an interesting debate. I think that's one of the reasons why I think it's nicer, quite often, to see um, um, older women portrayed in dramas because you get then you get a whole arc of a life. You get to see not just the, them being a mother, but you get to see them with all their disappointments in life, all the things they've learned in life and, and things like that. And I think that's really, that is really interesting. Right, I think, you know, women in society quite often feel marginalized. And, I, and, I, and maybe, maybe sometimes even menopause makes, that, makes them feel that way because Absolutely. it's a very confusing time. So you feel invisible. So it, it's nice to let everyone know that we're here. <laughs>